Uh, welcome back. Um, our next talk starts with uh, Cedric uh, about user application done with Triton. Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, so, user application. Uh, yesterday, I show you Chronos, the application to encode timesheets. And here, I will show exactly how it works and how you can develop your own user application. So, the goals of the user application is to do just one thing and it will be good to do it well. Uh, okay. Please, can you uh, stop the music? Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so, the goal is to make a, an easy to use application uh, with a quick start. Uh, and so, uh, without uh, password authentication. So for that, we reuse the HTTP stack of the server, and we, are, we will use also the JSON uh, format to communicate data. Uh, the same than the one to communicate the, for the communication between the client and the server, so it will support date, the time, uh, and uh, time delta, and all those uh, specific uh, data that uh, by default JSON doesn't have. So, uh, how do we do that? Indeed, we just create uh, new routes in the application, uh, and uh, in the whiskey application uh, of, Pry uh, of Triton. So you can import it simply by, from uh, tritond.application. You have uh, the app uh, objects, which is the WSGI application. And uh, as it's, ba it's based on uh, WorkZoo, uh, so you have all the tools uh, from WorkZoo to, that you can use. And uh, as uh, specific uh, stuff, you have the routing system. And so you can declare a route by using the decorator uh, route from the app. And you pass here the, the path of, uh, of the URL for which this method will respond. And you can define the methods uh, that works for this uh, method. Uh, so here, for example, it's just a get. So if you go and you do get on slash hello, the, the methods will run and will return this string uh, Simply, and it will work uh, directly in Triton. Uh, it's Triton that will uh, reply uh, to that. Uh, yeah, and so you can define those routes in your module. Uh, you just must be sure that uh, the code is run when the module is imported. So from the init file of your module, it should in some way import the, the file that contains your roots. So uh, here, it's just a simple uh, application uh, that just say hello. Uh, there is no authentication, so anybody can use it, uh, access to it, and re receive the, the, the result. But to build uh, an application, we need to to authenticate the user, uh, but and for that we don't want to use user password because uh, it's a lot of uh, some uh, work for the user to type his password when he want to use the application, and we want to have a quick application ready to uh, very fast to to use. Uh, so we will not use user and password. Instead, we will use uh, an application key. So the application key is a key created by the server uh, and store it on the server. 
uh, give back to the application and uh, uh, the application can use this key to authenticate themselves to the server. And the key is linked to the user, so we know the user and that it's a valid user. Uh, the application key should be kept secret as much as possible, so it should not be shown and uh, store it in a way that only the user can uh, have access to it. Uh, and uh, the key must be validated using the standard uh, Triton client from the preferences uh, view, as I showed yesterday. Uh, and once the key is validated, you can use it, uh, by the, the application can use it. How do you create such key? Because uh, the idea is that the application create the key, uh, and uh, she can do that by just making a post request on the URL uh, started by the database name, uh, slash user slash application. So it's a simple post with this data. The user for which we want to create uh, the, the, the key and the application. Uh, so each application must have a unique name uh, for in, into the system because the key will be available only for the application. Uh, it will not be uh, 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 available for other applications. So this really limits the, uh, the usage of the key and so uh, improve in some way the security. Right. Uh, and here the user, it should be, uh, it's the login name. Uh, it's not the ID or whatever, you just put the login name. And uh, if the user exists and the application exists, uh, then the Triton will return you the, the key that you can use and store it uh, for your application. Uh, the key is a long hash. Uh, I think it's a UUID, if I remember correctly, uh, the five, I think, which is random and normally uh, almost unique. Uh, once we have created the key and if the user has uh, validated, uh, we also want that the application uh, is able to manage this key, so if for some reason we want to revoke the key and uh, use another one or whatever, uh, we have an, an API also to remove the key. Uh, indeed, it's simply a delete a request on the same URL uh, with uh, as data the user and the key and the application. Uh, so here, we, by using the user and the key, we have a, a check that we are deleting a key linked to the right user. Uh, and if the three values doesn't match, uh, Triton will do nothing. So we cannot delete the key of other user easily. Uh, so now we have we are able to create routes, answer uh, to some questions, and have the, the key. Uh, but for that, to, to be able to use the key, we need to authenticate or validate it with what we have in the uh, user table, uh, and having some stuff, for example, uh, creating a transaction and so on. Uh, and for that, we have a set of helpers, which are in uh, Triton V dot protocols dot wrappers. Uh, there are wrappers that helps you to uh, to create your uh, methods. Uh, yeah, your methods. So the first is uh, the decorator uh, with underscore pool. Uh, this allow you to it will uh, replace from your uh, URL here that the database uh, argument into the pool of this database, correctly instantiated, and it does everything for you. Uh, so it's pretty easy to, to use, and it will be at the first, the first argument after the request. And you can use it to get the models and code like if, if you are on a standard uh, Triton object. 
We have another uh, helpers, which is, which is the decorator with transaction. Uh, this will create a transaction for you, uh, and it will commit it at the end if there is no exception. And the transaction uh, will be uh, writable uh, if it's, uh, by default, if it's, it's here, a post or uh, put a delete or a patch request. Uh, otherwise, it's read only. This is if you say nothing about the transaction. But you can force a different value, uh, and so it will not look at the kind of request you are doing. It will take the value. So read only could have three possibilities. So you can say true, and it will be always read only, even for post. You can say uh, false, and so it will be always not, not read only, even for the get. And if you leave it to none, it will be uh, depending. And there is a, a third helper, which is the user application decorator. Uh, this decorator, you uh, take the application uh, name as parameter, and it will re uh, validate the keys, uh, pass it to the request against this application, and it will automatically put you inside a transaction with the user. Uh, that is linked to the key. So you are, uh, once you have all the three uh, decorators, the methods inside is really like if it was a standard uh, RPC request from a, a module that we used to, to have. Uh, with the exception, uh, so yeah, the, you check the keys. Uh, the keys should be sent in the request as a, a parameter, an authorization parameter, and the, the, tip, the type of the parameter should be a mirror. So you, you have to put authorization, uh, comma, uh, mirror, space, the key. Uh, so it set the user for the transaction, I'll say, and it activates the check access. So once you have this decorator, uh, you are uh, you have access only to what the user has access access to. So the record rules apply, the all the model access, field access, and so on applies to your code. So it's kind of as if you are on as a client inside the code. Okay. Uh, and of course, you can yourself deactivate this feature by using, uh, changing the transaction uh, parameters with uh, the with decorator, put uh, check access false and change the, or change the user if you need to perform uh, an action uh, with some specific uh, right. Uh, the user application is also uh, another uh, uh, attribute, which is G JSON. Uh, this will force your answer to be uh, a JSON encoded answer. Uh, otherwise, uh, Triton will uh, look at your uh, content type of your request, uh, the supported content type of the request uh, that are in the request of the browser, and will try to find a way to send you the result in the for one format that the browser supports. Usually, we will use uh, JSON uh, to communicate. Uh, but, of course, you can yourself, on your methods, uh, take the response object from uh, what is a, and make it, manage it yourself. So, if Triton receives a response, you will just pass it to, to the server and so on. Uh, so uh, I will show you as exa uh, an example uh, the case of uh, the timesheet uh, and Kronos uh, application. So for that, I will show you the code. Uh, this is the code of uh, the trunk. With, uh, uh, the, the, so you see the file here. It's, it's the, in the module timesheet. 
and uh, we have taken as a rule to put the roots inside a file in the modules named roots. Uh, and uh, and the init indeed just import here the it imports the roots just to the uh, to, to load it and to activate the roots and we put into the dash dash all to prevent uh, having uh, warnings with uh, flakes and uh, stuff like that but it's not really required but I think it's a uh, good things to do. And here we see that in the timesheet modules, uh, we have some routes defined. And indeed, it's all the routes for the application. So we have uh, a first route, uh, yes, route or request or method, uh, which is named timesheet employee, employees. And this method returns all the employees links to the user. So. Uh, we see it's a get method. Uh, we instantiate the pool. We use a standard transaction. As it's a get, uh, a get it supports only get method, uh, it will be a redundant transaction. And here it's just a small trick to I use already instantiate only once the, the decorator, so I will have a specific decorator for the timesheet application. So after that, we check that the key match the timesheet application. And here, I'm uh, as the user who request who make the request for the the, the list of, uh, of employees. And so we just instantiate the user and look at his employees and just return the, the list. The list will be automatically encoded into JSON because uh, I said nothing specific uh, and by default, the browser will ask uh, for JSON uh, content. Uh, I have a second route, which gives me the works for an, uh, an employee. So in the URL, so I have still the database, uh, time sheet, and here I have the employee ID that I will receive. And uh, so I get here as second parameter or third parameter, the employee ID, which I can instantiate, search for the works and uh, retrieve it. Uh, and here for the works, I give the ID, the name to be displayed and the, the start and end date of the timesheet. Like that we can filter later and uh, propose to the user only validate uh, works, valid works for, uh, for the date. Uh, so after that, there are other methods also to retrieve the lines of the timesheet. So it's exactly uh, similar, except I can abort because here you should always be careful about the data you receive from the user. So here, if the user asks for the lines for a specific employee, you should check that it's an employee of this user uh, to be sure that uh, it's not someone to try to try to get uh, data from someone else and uh, so you can when you have an issue you can abort the request using the abort method from uh, what is a, it will raise it will generate uh, a four or three answer to the browser uh, which is uh, I think it's access deny if I remember correctly uh, yeah, and the last one here, it's a, it's a more complex route. It's the most complex in this, indeed, uh, because it manages the creation, the suppression, the deletion, and the update of uh, timesheet lines. So you see, uh, you can decorate multiple times the same method for different routes with different methods and so on. So here we, I manage all the action of on the timesheet line, line into one uh, method uh, with uh, different uh, uh, URL. 
and I will just I'll just uh, look at the kind of request if it's a post or a put I just create or update the line and if it's a delete I just uh, delete it and uh, you see for example when you delete you have nothing to return so uh, but if I just return uh, Python uh, in Python it will return none uh, and then uh, Triton will uh, encode it into JSON and so it will return null which is not really what you want to return when you delete something uh, and there is indeed uh, an HTTP code for uh, such operation it's uh, 204 uh, answer uh, I think it's uh, six uh, Content TV to con no content, I think something like that. Yeah. So, and you can here I, re I return a work the resp response like that. I skip all the Triton D uh, machinery to encode uh, the uh, the answer, and above I just return the what was created, the new lines or. Uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, that's for the Python parts. Uh, maybe we can make a session, uh, some question, and after that we can go to the JavaScript uh, mm -hmm. part. <laughs> yeah. I, my memories of uh, Flask are not super good, but I think you can define, so when you define your root, yeah. For example, the employee, you say it's an integer, so you say int column. Yeah. I think you can define uh, custom types. And I would yeah. say create a pool type, so you would say pool column database name. And like that, the, you don't need the with pool decorator, it's implicit. Uh, we have that with in Flask Triton, you can do that. Uh, I don't remember if it's a f uh, Flask feature or what is the feature. Uh, it's maybe uh, just a flask feature, so we cannot use, but should be checked. It's a possibility. Uh, also, something about the uh, decorator why you don't have to call a uh, with transaction, but uh, not uh, with pool. Uh, uh, because uh, with pool doesn't need any parameters. Uh, with transaction, we have the parameter to force the transaction to be read-only or not. And so you have to pass by the, uh, the decorator is created like that. Indeed, I just thought, uh, I think it's this morning, that maybe we could make uh, with transaction, if it's not called, to be also a decorator. If it's called without... Uh, or if it's call, be called with a method, a function, as first uh, parameter, it behaves like the, the decorator call it without any argument. But, yeah, that's. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I was wondering if the fact that the key is generated by the server, server application, uh, if I understood correctly, it's is not. By, by, the, by Triton. It's generated by Triton? Yeah. Okay. Then this no questions. I didn't understand it correctly. Indeed, uh, yeah. in Triton. Because you have also the key management is also root in the REST uh, modules. And so you have here, uh, so the post here create the, the key. Uh, and indeed, it's a user application record. And if you look at the. Okay. It is here, and you have a default value which is uh, the keys generated. It's used the UUID for, for it. It's the random. Um, I, I lost something. Um, you can generate uh, 1K for any user without 
the password of the user? Yeah. So, uh, so the application make a post. It gener that generate the key, but the key is a state here. You have three states. So by default, it's re created in the requested state. Then the user has to enter and validate it. In the, uh, the okay. standard application, validate the key. It's just a one-time validation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, but uh, isn't it possible when you generate a new key and you just generate it uh, many, many times uh, to attack the system that the random pool uh, run out of random numbers? Ah. Uh, normally, it depends on your OS and your version of Python. Uh, recent version of Python use the urandom, which is a blocking call, and so you will not generate the key until you have enough random. But indeed, also, uh, for the same, you, you see here there is a method count. And you have the same. Here, you will see the two exposants. Uh, you have the same uh, protection about creating keys, because anybody can create a key for any user. So you could have a kind of uh, attack, create a lot of keys. Uh, and then if a user starts to have too much keys, uh, pending keys, uh, the system starts to slow <laughs> down the, the creation. Uh, the sleep is done at the end of the transaction. So, uh, It's not very useful, I think, because if you go, if you have an attack with lots of keys, hmm. and what's the problem if if the the attacker is just creating keys, the only point is filling your database, which is going to happen anyway, uh, and you will keep more and more transactions open. So. What's the point? But I can create uh, 2,000. I can send you 1,000 requests, and you will create 1,000 keys. And you will be blocked for hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think you won't be blocked because the the criteria for uh, waiting is different from the criteria for logging. I don't think you should try to do anything here. Just, I don't think you need to sleep or you can have lots of requests unless you just allow to have five requests open and any new requests are rejected. Is it uh, for every user or just for the one user who requests the the sleep? For the user. So you cannot block the system if 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 it's only one user. Then uh, I, uh, if the same use if if it's always the same user, um, he will attack you. No, but someone could use the same user and uh, fill all the threads 
with uh, sleeping, and so uh, you don't have any thread left to do uh, something. So, so uh, we must uh, eject them yeah. if yeah, if there are too many. We are going uh, to run out of time, and uh, I would like to ask you how long uh, you need to uh, estimate it. And uh, please uh, overestimate, uh, not underestimate. Uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes? I can quickly show in five minutes. It's no need uh, to, uh, to hurry, but it's just uh, yeah. uh, five or 10, minutes. 10 minutes, OK. Uh, Is it OK for you? Uh, and so this manifest this define a little bit how of the web app extension will work. So you, you have a name, a version, and so on. That's for the updates. You can define the icon you are going to use, and that will be displayed uh, in the browser uh, bar. You can uh, define uh, script that are that will be used in the background. So uh, a web extension is a background web page that is never shown to the user, where you can have running, always running uh, code in JavaScript. Because otherwise, uh, you have only when you click on the, uh, the extension, uh, it, it pops up a window, and it's only at this when the pop-up is there that the code is running. So, you, if you want to synchronize and so on, you need to have a background. Uh, uh, process and this is done like that. You define the JavaScript that will be run in background, and you have to import all all of them. So here, we use jQuery and uh, to make the request, and we have uh, there is a backend to store the data in the local storage, and there is a background JavaScript uh, that does the synchronization from uh, every 10 minutes, I think. Uh, you can define how it's displayed in the, uh, when you click on it, uh, the kind of icons that will be shown, the default page, HTML page that will be used to, for the first pop-up, uh, and so on. And you have to define also the permission. So this permission say that the web extension can query any URL from anywhere. Uh, this is because we want to configure your your own Triton version. <laughs> so, and uh, alarms is to be able to uh, wake up the background uh, process to, to make the synchronization. So uh, I will show you the backend first. So it's JavaScript, uh, plain JavaScript, uh, with just jQuery. And this is uh, used to uh, store, to manage indeed the local database in the, in the browser. Uh, what happened is that to you have a way to communicate between, between the uh, pop-up page 
and this background page. And this is done with a dispatcher here, uh, which is uh, uh, which is called. Uh, it's uh, activated in the uh, background. Yes, I think. Yeah. This is a uh, standard way you have to register a listener that will call the, your code. And so you have the message, uh, who sent the message, and you have a method to send back the, res the answer, the response. Uh, and so in Kronos, we store uh, as much as possible because we want to work offline. So we store the employees, the works, the, the timesheet lines, and so on. And so I have here different kind of message uh, to give information to, uh, to the pop-up. And, uh, and so the pop-ups always query this backend instead of querying the, the server. And this backend for each kind of calls, I will just show the update employee. It will look at the local storage here about uh, what the employee knows already. And if we are offline, or if the, there is a, a timeout on the cache, so if we didn't refresh things a, a long time, uh, we return what we have in cache. Otherwise, we do the query here to the, to the Triton. Okay? And, uh, we, and we have the, the response. So this return. Uh, uh, promises, uh, promises that will be used here to call the callbacks with the data. And all is done like that for every uh, data store uh, we store. Uh, and yeah, the, I will just show you also how to make the queries with the authentication. So this is uh, Najax uh, query from uh, jQuery. Uh, you give the URL, of course, and in the headers, you have to put the authorization with the bearer, the keyword bearer, and the key. This will allow to re authenticate the request, and you have to ask for a content type JSON if you, you want to have JSON. We support JSON and XML if you want to use XML. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, that's. Uh, uh, on your own, <laughs> uh, and after that we store it. So this is how we make the queries. Uh, we have so the uh, the background process. Uh, so the background just register the the dispatch methods and create the alarm that triggers the synchronization. Yeah, uh, and on the back end, when you update a line, indeed, we update it on the local storage, and there is uh, a mark uh, here, dirty. We flag it as dirty. That means it's not saved on the server, and uh, when it's triggered, uh, the process that synchronizes look at all the dirty lines and push. Uh, the updates to the to the server, and the new lines we just use a negative ID to know that it's a new record, and we use a negative ID because we want to track if it's updated on the local storage. Uh, we can update it on the on the pop up. Uh, yeah, that's maybe all, and the Chronos JavaScript. Uh, yeah, it's standard JavaScript stuff. We get tags from the web page and uh, just callbacks to the buttons to perform different actions. And here, for example, this is how you communicate with the backend. So you send the message and you get, you give a callbacks method that on which you can have update or uh, behave on uh, or do what you, you need. Uh, yeah, I think it's all for, or made the, if 
Someone else question? Someone this Any part? Question? Any any questions? What? And you have the HTML. Ah, you want to see? Okay. Uh, yeah, the HTML it's use Bootstrap. Here, so it's, this is the pop-up, standard pop-up. Uh, we have enough bar, and so that uh, you have containers with buttons to change the date. Uh, and I think uh, you have here the tables to show all the time sheets, all the lines for, for, for the date. And when you change the, the date with the buttons, it triggers an update of this table and, and so on. It's now nothing special. It's web development. <laughs> Uh, yeah. In the Python code, I saw a call to a, an abort function. Onion? Abort function in the in the Python code in the Python side. Ah, in the in, in the, the Python, in the Python code. code. Yes. Yeah, in the roots in a, yes. in a function okay. annotated. That means you are checking. Uh, the, the authorization uh, imperatively. In, I mean, you are not delegating to the to the model functions like write and create and so on. Uh, uh, the yeah, can, can we see the, the the piece of code with the Abort call? Uh, the, the roots from the timesheets module. Yes. Here, which which one? I don't remember the the, the code. Here? There is it, someone it, it who called to abort with, with a forbidden ah, yeah. HTTP status. This code. one, there. yeah. And usually, that you should delegate that to the to the Triton core. The Triton core. I I don't. No. Yeah, yeah. And so why do you abort? Because here, in this case, the, the employee is not in the user, the employee list, the user. But you have to manually check that in, in, in your functions? Uh, indeed, uh, I think we have record rules on timesheets that say who can see the, the timesheet of someone else. Uh, but uh, I didn't want to rely on the record rules because they could have been modified. And I want to ensure that what we show in the application is only uh, the employee timesheet lines. And it cannot tr make uh, sub or mix different employee uh, value. So uh, it's more a kind of protection against bad uh, mistake in, in the application, uh, bugs. In, uh, and yeah, and in some way also I would like, I don't like too much to rely on the configuration of the server. And for me, the record rules and the model access is co it's just configuration. So if it's something we don't want to have, uh, as behavior, when you develop the application, I think it should be done there and not rely on some configuration. But in Triton, when you define the, the, uh, a group and you set the user in a group and you say that the, that, yeah, group that group has no, uh, no read access to a given model, yeah. then when you define a, an annotate, a, a root, an app root, that should work. Uh, out of the box, yeah. I ex I would expect that. And what you're saying is that that the behavior would have uh, as part of the configuration of the system. So he uh, prefers to uh, read it specific. So uh, although the, yeah. the behavior would be the one that you. Yeah, yeah, it it will do that. 
by default, but I, w I want to ensure that I do not, uh, don't want to rely on the configuration. And also, you have a group, a timesheet group, that has access to all the timesheets. And so the user of this, in this group, if you use the application, it will have a different behavior, and that's something I don't think it's good. Any other questions? Thank you. Maybe I'm missing something, but uh, I don't understand why uh, we are not based directly on RPC, RPCs. RPC? Yeah. Uh, because RPC, uh, we have to, uh, for now, the authentication on RPC is based on what I explained this morning. It's the login and the session and so on. Uh, we have also, for like for XML RPC, but we have now for JSON RPC. You can have also you can use the uh, I don't remember the standard authentication of HTTP where where you put in front of the URL the username password. Yeah. This is not very secure way of working because you have the password that travel every on every request. Uh, and it, this way of working doesn't work if you activate uh, SMS authentication or some another uh, factor of authentication. Uh, also, the, the current RPC is designed to be used by the client, and it has uh, it works in a specific way. Uh, and I think if you want if you want to make a small application that works fast, the the application should do the uh, the less possible uh, queries uh, requests, and this means that you have to design the request the the API of this application uh, the routes and the API from the server should be designed explicitly for this application and tailor it to give exactly what you need. Uh, and maybe I can show, for example, here, when you request the timesheet line, I send also directly uh, the name of the work. So I don't have to make a second query to get the name of the work. Uh, and I convert the duration directly in seconds and because that's what I need. And so I think it's. I, I agree that we, we yeah. don't develop, uh, we don't have the same, uh, we don't develop the same way. But uh, probably if we can, uh, on uh, authentication of RPC, add the possibility to uh, to use uh, the application key. To, yeah. to, avo to avoid s some, sometimes to develop but just uh, an entry point yeah. because we need the extra information. The, the issue also is if we put it on the RPC, we can no more uh, limit the API to only a subset of commands. Here, uh, the key that you create for the ap timesheet application works only for the four routes here. And if you have another module with another application, uh, you cannot use the key from the timesheet for this one. And if we put that on the RPC, it means if you have access to RPC, you have access to all the methods of RPC. So we have two two endpoints on uh, on on Triton. An endpoint for uh, you you can see that <laughs> as endpoints, but indeed yeah. it's only one server with it just routing. It routes differently and authenticate differently. Thank you. Yeah. So more questions. So is it possible that at some point in the future uh, we, will be we will be able to use uh, the same kind of uh, key authentication with RPCs? The same kind? Yeah. Yeah, it will be a lot easier. A lot easier? You, you to, to do different things because, uh, well, 
I can understand that uh, this is a very convenient way to design your own API. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's a lot of work to do uh, because RPC basically uh, provides you possibilities to do anything you want in Triton. And mm -hmm. uh, it would be really convenient to have uh, some easy way of authenticating. Yeah, but the issue is that if you do that for, uh, you create a key, you are creating a long running session, a uh, session that never expi expires. So it's, and you give access to all the system if you know just this key. I think it's quite risky. Uh, but uh, after that, you can create a route, a unique route that behaves like RPC. And inside, you call uh, the, the methods of any objects. You can create your own small API with one method. And you put as parameters the, the model, name, the methods. And you give the parameters. And you can access to everything. So in three lines, you have. That for it. you have redesigned RPC using the key management. So, yeah, if you want to do it, you can. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, we are finished. Good. Thank you very much, Cedric.